Hello uh, folks, welcome back to the Wiz Garage. Right, we've got the table out today. Um, going to do a tall video, long awaited, many people have asked for it many times, so it's time to get that done. But before I do, I've got some mail delivery. Um, I have some very good friends out there who wanted to show their relevant appreciation for the channel, so I appreciate that, thank you. Just wanted to show you, first of all, um, this is from a mate, Yorkshire Phaser, sent us a jet wash wand, which uh, I think was a spare one you had. So I really appreciate that. That's going to be useful because uh, I'm using an eye booster every day now, and it's right at the minute while it's 30 degrees and sunshiny every day, but the rain will come back as sure as the sun comes up, and we'll be using this. So when I get home, I keep the jet wash rigged up at, uh, at the end of each day, just give it a blast over, especially around the brakes and gets all the salt off and so on. So thanks ever so much for that. Appreciate your time and appreciate you sending that. And there's another little thing in there as well, which is quite nice. So have a check out Yorkshire Phaser. I'll try and put a link there. Um, that is a very well received gift, so thank you ever so much for that, mate. And the other little thing you sent as well, it went down very well. Penny liked that, didn't you? I did. Icing as well. Icing and icing on it as well. Thank yeah. you. Now, the other thing, just want to come to something else. Somebody contacted us recently and said, can he help out with the expenses towards the channel? Make a donation, I think was the term we used. And I thought that was very sweet, very special. Uh, just to explain, we aren't really a business in the form of what we do. The channel has taken on somewhat of a bit of a show dare i say it if that's not too bold and in that sense people do look to it for advice and guidance and so on and our reason for being is that we like to help you we like to help the new riders we like to put the message of fixing your own bike how hard can it be etc etc to the new rider and the reason for this is that new riders quite simply enter the market they buy themselves a new bike, a Phaser, a Bandit, an SV650, whatever and on even your 883 Harley these days um, a brand new bike just does what it's supposed to do. It just works. Nothing goes wrong with it. It doesn't have knobbly edges. It doesn't need repairs, constant looking after. It does just work from service to service to service where you can just go along, book it in, and have a nice latte in the waiting room. And that's not really the way, is it? Because it still needs things checked and we still like to save money and do it for jobs ourselves. Lots of people have come forward and said, done jobs myself, fixed my brakes, didn't realize it'd be so easy. Kind of angry now that I've been paying so much money to the dealer for so long to do this. Now that I do it myself, he's not going to be getting that money anymore, which I think is great. And that's exactly what we set this up for. The other side of it is a safety issue. No matter how plug and play a bike is, no matter how utterly reliable it is, it still needs the tire pressures checked. It still needs to check things like leaks. It still needs to keep the brakes clean. You can build a bike out of titanium. It doesn't matter. It still gets dirty and it still needs that dirt cleaned off, especially around the brakes and so on, because motorbikes are a little bit more labor intensive than cars they truly are you can't just drive a bike up the road and back every day and neglect it even rat bikes need, ne they need an element of care adjusting the chains on so the money we've saved people a particular chap um contacted us and said this his name is dan he contacted us and said can i make a contribution to the channel well thankfully we got the message out to you my friend and you have saved a great deal of money and time and you've learned some things and I said to you, we don't really have expenses because anything we do in the channel, anything we do in the garage is down to us. It's ours. We do it because we need to do it. So any of those expenses belong to us. And in that sense, there's nothing to pay. So he asked for uh, a logo, the Del Boys Garage channel logo. He said, have you got, just, can you just send us it? I really didn't even thought to it. I just said, yeah, you can send it. Actually, he's going to use it on his YouTube channel or what? But boy, were we wrong. Hey, Ben. Yep. Boy, were we wrong. Lovely. In the post. A few days later on, turned up. Look what we got. Look what we got. <laughs> that was Gretsch. One each, one for Penny Pitstop, and one for Del Boy. A mug for the garage. Don't even go there. Don't even go there. Resist. <laughs> Resist. Don't say it. And there we are. That was Garage. Mugs for me and Penny. Thank you very much, Thank Dave. you. That's lovely. Thank you. That's very tea. special. We can now have tea in the garage. Now, best of all, and this is something that uh, I'm very impressed with, Dan sent us a banner. And initially I thought, is there a political message here? It's a white banner, but no, there it is. And what it is... Look is at that. Right. Look at that. It oh is my god! Double garage banner! Now this, I'll come on this slide again, is going to go up. We have a special space for this already. It's going to go up there. 
We're going to trim it down a little bit because the ends are quite long. And that's going to go right there. So now we're officially Bilbo's Grinch. There we go. So that is fantastic. It's kind of like a vinyl, isn't it? Like a sort of vinyl banner. And it's printed. I didn't know you could get this stuff done. How do I know? I possibly would have got this done a little while before. So what I'm going to do, that, I'm going to just put safely out the way there. I'm going to lay it on the damage pile. Nice and safe. And we're going to get that nailed up on the wall. I'll be back to you in a minute. And there we are. Ta da! Ta da! Welcome to Delby's Garage. Thank Thanks, you, Dan. Dan. Absolute lovely. gen. Wonderful. I love it. What I'm going to do is put a proper, I'm going to gaffer tape that with some, I'll get some white gaffer tape and that'll be smooth and stick perfectly like a proper sign then. I'm going to do that bit, pull down anyway. There we go. Right. So, trims off the excess. Use that for something as well. Excellent. So, there we are. Thanks, Dan, for the mugs and the brilliant banner. Uh, thanks, Chris, Yorkshire Phaser. From a wand, I love that to bits. Thanks, Jeff, from a t-shirt. <laughs> and most of all, you can say it. Scott and Debbie. Scott and Debbie, thanks for the cap. This is actually Penny's birthday cap. <laughs> I'll let I just it. purloined it for today because mine's dirty. It's a bit sweaty this time of year. I don't like sweaty caps. So that's cool. Thanks to everybody for all the kind gifts you send. There's no need. We don't court this, and we don't. We we wouldn't suggest you send us loads of stuff. It isn't what we do it for. The greatest prize of all, as Penny, I'm sure, will agree with me, is that. We hear that people have learned something they didn't know, they've done something that previously they paid a mechanic for, and they've saved cash and learned, and that's brilliant. That's what it's all about. Once upon a time there were more bikers out there that used to spread the knowledge, our dads used to teach us this kind of thing, and these days that isn't the case anymore. Um, like I said, bikes become so reliable, we forget that we should do these little jobs and these little things ourselves. So there we go. Thank you for those lovely mail calls, much appreciated. Now let's get on with the tool video. Stick around, stay tuned, let's see how it goes. Right, now what I've laid out while you're here, this is a basic toolkit. Now this is what I would suggest to get anybody started are the essentials. You will need wrenches, spanners. These, with a ring one end and an open the other, combination spanner. You can work out why, can't you? Obviously, yep. you can get ring spanners, which are just a ring spanner each end, so you get two different sizes, and that's got a step in it, so they're known as step rings. Getting complicated? Not really. Basic set of spanners, that's all you need. And combinations are great, because whilst you've got that size in your hand, sometimes you can't get the ring spanner on it, or you can, you, they work. Now, when you buy these in sets, there's a weird thing. You'll notice that they come without an 18 mil you'll go from 10, in fact this one goes from 8 mil, so 8 mil, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then 17, then 19. They skip 16 and they skip 18 and you'll find that you don't need them, not very often. That's a set of spanners worked out probably by people who are mechanics who design these sets and you can buy them like that. They come in a little pack. If you've got a metric bike, a Japanese bike, then that. If on the other hand you've got Harley Davidson, you can buy them in Imperial or AF, which is American Fine. So that's giving you sets, a set of basic wrenches or spanners. That's really the backbone of any toolkit. The next is the sockets. Sockets always come in sets. You can buy them naked and loose. You can buy individual sockets and you'll do that as time goes on. But to start with, I just got this socket set and little things I've done, this set as it is here, is quarter drive and what that refers to is this little peg here that goes into the socket to drive it is a quarter of an inch so it's known as a quarter drive it's ever so easy isn't it you can buy three-eighth drive that's three-eighths of an inch it's bigger you can buy half inch drive dun, 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 which is that size and you can even get three-quarter inch an inch and two inch and blah 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 but for a motorbike you really should be sticking with quarter drive and there's a great reason for this a socket or a ratchet that size isn't very big, so you can't really swing on it, monkey boy, can you? So you're not so likely to snap bolts off. And notice, quarter drive sets go up to about 13 mil. That's it. You're not going to get a bigger spanner, a bigger socket than that. You're not going to get 
a quarter drive, 32 mil. You're just not, you need a half inch. And it, it works, doesn't it? You can see what I mean. So most fasteners on a motorbike are gonna be reasonably small. This particular set was very much House of Sticks. Uh, you can tell because the 10 mil that I use all the time is somewhere, probably rusty. It is, there it is. The 10 mil is worn. The chrome's wearing off it around the top. It's chipping off because I use it a lot. So that's not snap-on. If that was a snap-on uh, socket, it would be replaced under warranty. That's one of the things you get with snap-on. And snap-on, as far as I remember it, when I was buying snap-on for my job, it was, uh, well, when I was buying it as a mechanic, it was about pound twenty a millimeter. So a 10 mil socket would be about 12 quid, 12 pounds for one socket. And again, you can buy socket sets for 12 pounds, but this, their house of straw, and they're just gonna fail because the sockets won't be the right size. Another thing that's in, in important is you can get, if you look inside there, Pen, that's got six sides to the hole. That's got 12. A 12 sided socket is okay, in large sizes. In small sizes, six is better because the six sides are bigger and they get a better purchase. So six sided sockets, a small socket set. The ratchet that was in there, the original ratchet broke because it is again house of sticks. So I went out and I bought, at extra money, a house of stone ratchet. This is Armstrong. Armstrong is an American company again, very much like Snap-on. And an Armstrong ratchet, that little tiny ratchet cost me 45 pounds, but I've used it for 25 years and it's never let me down. I've pulled it all apart once. There's little rivets in it. You take the screws out, you can re-grease it, you can resurface it. It is a life tool. Expensive. You don't need to buy a snap-on socket set. That would cost you an arm and a leg, but you do buy the bit that wears the most. It's the same in the 3 8 drive. I splashed out 90 pounds on a ratchet, a 3 8 drive snap-on ratchet, because every time I reach for a socket, you use the ratchet. So that's used every single time you touch a socket, but all the sockets are only used independently. So some things you can snap, you, you can splash out on, and it is just your house of stone socket set you don't need. You need some long reach sockets. Those are useful because things like spark plugs, you get down into the hole. Also, you can't always reach bolts. You can't always get things on. You get extensions, things like that, which get the socket in further. But basically, some long reach ones are a useful purchase. Again, these are snap-on ones. I bought them when I was a mechanic, and that whole rail there was £150. You wouldn't buy it. You just can't justify it. Go to a tool shop now, you could get that rail of sockets uh, probably for more like about £50, and that's much more like it. Because you're not going to use them enough to wear them out. Remember, mechanics are doing it seven days a week. They work very hard, and their tools get a beating, and they have to have that guarantee that if they break a tool, it's just replaced. You don't need that. You're only going to use them every five minutes. Socket set, spanner set, covered those. Screwdrivers, you can buy them in sets. Now this set, I went to a local well-known motoring store and I bought some oil. And they were doing a special deal, buy a set of screwdrivers and you get a second set free. Now I didn't need them, but I bought a set, so I've got another set. And I sent the other set to my friend Klaus, which is because, you know, he, he made the damage sign for me. So I thought I'd do that just as a thing. Obviously Klaus was building a bike at the same time and he's, his garage is um, an example of what a mess looks like. So I thought I'd just because you obviously can't find these. So I've got two for one. You know, they're cheap, you can buy them. You can buy, you can buy snap-on screwdrivers. Again, one of those, there we go, snap-on screwdriver, coming on that pen. Broke the end off it. POS, that POS screwdriver snapped and sheared off a screw, which I had to then drill out. And that's snap-on, and if I went back to snap-on and said that's buggered, I want a new one, they'll draw that out with a special tool they've got and they'll stick a new blade in it. You won't get a new handle. So their guarantee is very much a limited thing. That is my ratchet screwdriver. The, the mechanism in that is why I bought a snap-on one, and I've had that oh, so long, I think I was given. So in the sense, you need a basic set of screwdrivers, spanners, sockets, then some other odds and ends. You also need a hammer. Everybody needs a hitting stick. <laughs> it's a man thing. Um, now these, again, Mole grips, we call them here. Um, Vice Grips, American company again, only because the guy who sold the tools, the Armstrong tools, he was a, a Blue Point tools representative and they sell Vice Grips. Now I've used Mole Grips and I've used Vice Grips. Mole Grips tend to, these rivets that go through tend to stretch and they become baggy and old. The Vice Grips ones don't. And as you can see by the state of those, I've ground on them, welded on them, beaten the life out of those the state of the end of the jaws in that, filed them back. In fact, I was welding one day, went to undo these and they were welded to the bike. 
They've been quite a nice little attachment, but I just snap them off, ground out a bit of weld, and they're fine. Vice grips, excellent quality. You need some pointy pliers. You need some regular pliers. My grandfather gave me these. These are made by Brittle or Brightall, which is a British company, and these are about circa 1949, 1950. I love those, but I don't pussy them. They get used hard, and they've never gone wrong. On motorbikes as well, little tiny pair of pointed pliers, ever so useful for little springs and things, little washers. So some basic jaw grip thingies. Spark plug brush. You're always going to have to clean your spark plugs at some point. I don't care how clean burn your bike is, cleaning up a spark plug. Or a bolt, for instance. You take a bolt out, you're going to put the bolt back in. It's a bit skanky where there's some, some Loctite on it. Brass, wire, brush. Give it the bejesus. Great stuff. Allen keys. This is a big subject, this one. Allen keys, um, these have got the ball ends on. If you have a look there. That's the ball end, so that when it's in, it's it. got it. When it's in the tool, when it's in the bolt, it can move around and, and it can operate at an angle. And then the strong angle that does that side is straight. Now this is a metric set again because I work on Harley's as well. Got an AF set, simple imperial set, um, and these are usually about twenty pounds, twenty-five pounds for a set. So you do need a set of Allen keys. Now I've had a, a backing tin of Allen keys for years. These are ones you just accumulate over time. Come to that in a minute. Um, but you can't ever find the size you want. So when they come in a handy rail like that, keep them in it. You really should, because then if you need to know the size or you need to find a size, you can. This side of it is big Allen keys. You can buy individual, that's a Torx bit, but that was a snap on one, even though it's rusty. And that's about 20 years old, and that was about 15 pounds. That, on the other hand, is an Allen key I made for getting 19 mil heads off. Um, 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 Pan-European Honda fork top. It's a big 19 mil or 17 mil Allen socket. One of those for it, about 30 pounds. That, nothing. Heated it up, bent it over, polished it up. Allen key, made it myself, job done. You can do that kind of thing. Now, that's in my view, torque wrench, obviously, so you know the torque values. Simple torque wrench. This is a Sykes Pickavant one. A lot of people say, which one do I get? Just get a decent one. Remember my rule on House of Stone, House of Sticks, and then Chinese House of Straw. Don't buy rubbish tools. They're a false economy. But at the same time, don't waste your money on, on things like snap-on tools if you're just a home mechanic. There's no need for it. It's exceptional money. Now, finally, Torx bits. On motorbikes these days, especially Harley Davidson's, you'll find these Torx bits. That's these things again. These little star drives. They're quite important, buy a decent quality, Draper Expert, excellent quality tools. I bought those, found that I actually found these as well, the Clark set, which are even better. They've got better sizes, and these are titanium coated, so they're more accurate in their size. Because Torx bits, especially the ones, for instance, in your Harley Davidson Derby cover, the fasteners seem to make them stale pastry. So you put a fastener in there that's the wrong size, it's just going to mince them out, you're drilling the heads off, it's getting a nightmare. Better off using the right size tool. Accurate tools will prevent grief in the long term. So that, really, is a base start toolkit. You've got just about everything there, a ruler. That is a 6mm Allen key in a socket. And I've only got one. I didn't splash out my set, because they're expensive. But that is almost everything there is. It's the foot peg hangers. It's brake calipers, there's so many things that a six millimeter Allen key. So I splashed out and got a really posh one, that was about 20 pounds. You can buy them for even more than that, but don't buy cheap ones because it's a waste of time because you'll snap that and that's it. But again, be frugal. Things like this, my tire pressure gauge. How many times do you use a tire pressure gauge? How many times should you use it? How many times do you use it then? Every time you go out. Every time you take your bike out in the morning. Three pounds fifty, B and Q, Home Depot. By the way, Dan, we use B&Q, which is our version of the Home Depot, seeing as you asked in your video about the uh, Duro mat in the floor of the, of the hot rod. This was from B&Q, which is our sort of Home Depot version, £3.299, whatever. And that's brilliant. There's pretty much a basic start toolkit. So the next thing is whether you need to go further. Things like files. Uh, files. Hacksaws. Drill bits, drills, cutting equipment, etc. Are you going to fabricate stuff in your garage? Are you going to make things? Or are you just going to repair your bike? These tools here are fundamentally for undoing shit and doing shit back up again. They're not for fabricating. They're just keys. A spanner 
just undoes and does up nuts and bolts. That's all they're for. If you want to get involved in making stuff, you need drills and cutters and grinders and, and you know, jigsaws and all sorts of other things, you'll build them as you go. But if you want to basically get started, you haven't got any tools at all, this is the fundamental layout. So have a little look at that. That would be a great right. idea. I think you've probably all seen one of these. This is a straightforward cantilever toolbox. I was given it free when I started working for London Transport as a bus mechanic. This is what we were given. This is it. And it was full of tools. All the sockets in one side, spanners in the other, screwdrivers, grips and jaws and all the big stuff in the bottom. That's it. And very quickly, as the Snapple man comes in every week, you go and see him, you buy yourself some tools, you start to expand things. You just need another one and then you need another one and you outgrow it. So the fundamental uh, principle of that toolbox is only okay if you can use it as a tote box. Now that's all I use that for. If I'm going to do a job outside, I'll take all the tools I need, pop them in there, fill it all up with what I want, fill it up and it comes with the job done. But the problem is, you as a person in your garage can't grow that toolbox. So that's where the chest comes along. I want to show you this. I found this the other day, come on, okay? in the local paper. This is our version of Toolmart, Machine Mart. These are a brilliant company. I'm sure you guys watching in the UK know this firm. They do everything as you can see, but here I want to focus in on this bit. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah. But these toolboxes you can buy, this little stack here, 63 pounds for a basic stack box. Now the great thing with that is, when you buy that, that's this bit here. That's the bit from there to there. When you buy that, you get enough drawers. I mean, all I've done, I've took my screwdriver set and I've just laid them in. And whenever I need to know where they are, they're there. And if one's missing, there's a gap in the box. So I know there's a screwdriver missing. I've got others that over the years have accumulated, but I get involved in that. It's the same as the socket set. All I've ever done, there's the socket set. It just lays in the top on its own. I just cut the lid off it and laid it in the top and all the other stuff. You get room to grow and then you buy other sockets and then you get other bits and pieces. You'll always, you'll always grow stuff, bits and little extension bars and bits and pieces. It's handy to know where to put your hand on them. Um, drawers that you can put all sorts of stuff. I'll start, when you start getting into fabricating and you get cut and tap and die sets and things like that, you've got somewhere to put them. Now, you will fill it up. You'll get to a point where that that you bought is full up. Great, and all you do then is you buy a mid cap, which is that little bit there, and you just put it underneath. It's just three extra drawers. One of those will probably set you back in the region of about 25, 30 pounds. And you get three extra drawers, and in mine, you've got all the grips and stuff in there. And you'll get to know where they are, because it's yours, because you put it in there. So if you buy into this, you can add to it. And then the big rolling cabinet or roll cabs at the bottom, you start putting all your other stuff in, which drills, bits and pieces, all the electrical stuff. I've got a whole drawer there for all the wiring, fuses, that sort of thing, um, drill bits, all the big tools you can't, move, you can't put elsewhere. Cutting stuff, rivet sets, clamps. You can, you can set your toolbox how you want, but the principle of buying a toolbox, as I would always suggest to anyone, is get involved in this to start with. Get a chest. Don't know what colour it is, that's irrelevant. That's just a basic starter chest, 63 pounds, and you can just add up, right up to two or 300 pounds for a full stand-up set. There's no need to buy all that to start with. Now, the, the principle of this, again, you get the locker I put on the side there for things like axle stands and um, heli coil pits. Anything you use, you need somewhere to keep it, somewhere you can put your hands on it, and that's very important. So that's what I bought. This is a company called Stackon, so it's clearly House of Sticks, but it is House of Sticks, it's not House of Straw. It's never let me down. One of the things that you'll find with the real cheap ones is the rivets on the end here. The drawers will screw up so they won't go in and out properly. Um, the Snap-on man says to me once, if you buy a Snap-on box, when you hold the drawer on this end, you can push it in and out, but it doesn't jam. Do you see it jamming, Ben? I don't see it jamming. Anyone else see it jamming? That's the point. They are just as good. The difference is when that goes wrong, I, I, I have to go and get another one. But that top curve, that whole stack there was £250, which is about one tenth of what it would cost for Snap On. Remember, Snap On stuff comes with a lifetime guarantee. You can take it back to the Snap On representative and they'll replace it for you. 
but you're not using it enough to ever break it, to ever go wrong, uh, to ever put yourself in a position where you need it replaced. If you do, it only costs you a few quid so you can get a new one. So it's balancing, that's my message to get out in this video, it's balancing the difference between house of store, house of stone and house of sticks and everyone should go for the house of sticks option. The other thing I would suggest, if you're going to work in your garage, I would always like to say this as a final point, is a fire extinguisher. You're working in your garage, gasoline, oils, other fluids, things like brake cleaner, aerosol cans that have got nasty no <laughs> sorry, uh, nasty <laughs> knocks, and these, these, when you look, if you were talking to, I know, a fire safety officer or whatever, this is always the first thing they say, is to have yourself a decent fire extinguisher. When I worked as a mechanic, it's actually a whole day's course. They get the local fire brigade officer in and they show you they set fire to a bucket of diesel, which is harder than you think, and harder than the thing to put out as well. Um, so you will risk fire. You're gonna, if you're going to get involved in grinding, cutting, sparks, welding, anything else, fire extinguisher is your first concern. And when you've got your fire extinguisher, again, I bought this for, I think it was about £25, I think, came to. And it's got a little gauge on it, if you have a look in, Pat. Little gauge on there, in the green, says it's healthy. You don't have to test it. If it goes outside of that, this is a powder extinguisher. The reason I use a powder extinguisher is it's good for all things. Powder will put any fire out. You can use foam, but foam is wet, so electrical fires, if you've got the wiring catches fire on your bike, it's only 12 volt, but you really don't need a bolt out of that. These guys will sell fire extinguishers. Yeah. Machine yeah. toolbox, lots of space, basic toolkit, and grow into it. That's the message to get across. Buy yourself a fire extinguisher, and make sure that when you're working in your garage, you work as safe as you can. I think the final word probably has to go to them. If you're going to get involved in cutting, grinding, welding, Elton's. Always wear your Elton's. Just a nice safety thing. Anything else you can think of, just put in the comments box. So there we are. Thanks for tuning in and watching Dollars Garrett. This has been just a simple tool video. You can do it how you like. There is no hard and fast rules. That's just what I've done. You don't have to spend a fortune on tools, but don't go spending pennies because it will come and hit you in the face. Okay, there you go. Ride safe. It's summertime now. It's up as 10 in the morning. 30 degrees. 30 degrees. We're going to meet some friends at the local Harley dealer for coffee. Ride safe. See you next time.